Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I recently did a video that got a lot of positive feedback regarding fish behavior and how sunlight and sunlight penetration, in my opinion, is the single biggest factor in changing fish behavior. And I got a lot of viewer questions and comments regarding that video, specifically asking me to give some other factors regarding fish behavior. What are some of the other things that can affect how fish uh, act? Does it change, make them change positions? Does it push them to deeper water? Does it increase or decrease fish activity levels? Uh, so these are things that I thought I would address. So I, I've got here a list of different variables or different factors that also affect fish behavior. And these all kind of relate back in one way or another to the sunlight penetration, which in my opinion is truly the greatest impact to fish behavior. Uh, I'll put a link to that video so that you can go back and listen to that or watch that if uh, you have questions regarding it. But no matter what happens, keep in mind that the sunlight will be something that affects some of these other variables. So once you've understood that sunlight really does dictate fish movement and it helps position fish, you can start looking at some of these other factors. One of those is barometric pressure. You know, that's something that probably most of our parents at some point was like, well, is the barometer going up or down, right? And you see it in all the fishing magazines. You hear people talk about it all the time. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I truly understand exactly what's happening to the fish. There's different things out there. I've got my own theory. Personally, what I think happens is it puts the fish in a sluggish, a sluggish mood. You know, if you've got a pressure change where you have higher inc an increase in pressure, to me, I envision that giving the fish like a stomach ache and therefore it lowers their, their activity level. Uh, you know, at the same time, if you have stable pressure or you've got decreasing pressure, I look at it as it makes the fish less gassy and therefore they feel better and therefore they want to go out and feed more. But what I can tell you is through my experience, I have seen so many examples where high pressure or low pressure changes those fish activity levels and fishing can be dramatically better or worse. As an example, if you have good stable weather conditions during the spring or the pre-spawn period and you're fishing a jerkbait, you probably have a pretty good bite going on. As soon as that front goes through, when you're talking about the second day of a high pressure front that comes through, the jerkbait bite is going to be the devil. It will be the worst bait you can throw. Most of the fish will be near the bottom and unwilling to chase the jerk bait. I've done videos on this as well. I call it my school of hard knock series where I talk about things I've learned the hard way. Well, this is one of them. I can't tell you in my early years how many times I tried to force a jerk bait bite and got burned by a high pressure change that came through. I'd catch a good bag day one, day two, I couldn't do it. I'd come in with one or two fish and the guys that still caught them were guys that were dragging baits on the bottom. And that's what my experience has been since then. I've learned from my lessons. And at this point, if I'm in a high pressure period during the spring, I am fishing a slow moving bottom bait 100%. You will still catch fish doing that, but the fish are not willing to come up and hit a jerk bait. The same thing happens during the summer periods. A lot of times the fish, you may be on a great topwater bite, a lot of times the topwater bite will disappear if you're in a high pressure move, uh, uh, change has come through. So the barometric pressure is definitely a player with respect to the fish. Now, the one thing I'll add with this, though, is it's an uncontrollable. We can't control what the pressure is going to be. But if you're aware that the fish may be in a more lethargic state and you might need to fish either really tight to cover or you might have the fish on the bottom, you can adjust to it. So it's something to be aware of. So that is definitely one factor that changes fish behavior. Another one has to do with water temperature. And I don't really care what time of year it is. You know, I would definitely say it has a much greater impact on fish movement, fish feeding activity levels, and fish, you know, overall behavior during the cold water period. So anything from the fall through the winter and into the, the spring, the pre-spawn period specifically, the water temperature has a huge impact. But having said that, you will see that same impact take place during the summer months. You know, yes, you can fish, you can catch fish shallow in 90 degree water temps year round, 
but a lot of the fish, a greater proportion of the fish population will actually slide back down to deeper water, which is cooler during that period. I think a lot of times those fish that were catching up on the bank, those lone rogue fish in 90 degree water temps, a lot of times I think they're up there just to feed. Once they've, once they've eaten, they'll slide back down to a more comfortable temperature range. Uh, but you very much have fish movement dictated by water temperature all year long, not just in the in the cold water periods. It has more effect on angling, I think, during the cold water periods than it does on uh, anything else. But you will see fish moving around with it. So that's still very, very important. Uh, you know, we talk about forage all the time on this channel. Everyone talks about forage and try, you know, if you find the forage, you find the fish and very much so that's another factor that dictates fish behavior and fish activity levels. You know, if you're on a lake that's got shad, you probably should try to understand shad migration, shad movement, shad life cycle, whether it's gizzard shad, threadfin shad, uh, you know, they all act a little bit differently. But if you understand where the shad spawn is going to take place after the bass are done spawning, you probably will find some fish. If you understand that the shad will migrate into a lot of the coves during the fall, you'll be able to find the fish. So it's very important to understand your uh, forage species life cycle because that will definitely help you understand what's going on. I've talked about on this channel before, I've got some lakes here in Wisconsin that there's one period like in the middle of June where you get a tad, the tadpole you know, develop and you'll see tadpoles all over the lake. And because of that, they're one of the greatest things to try to mimic. The fish will be all over them. And I'll throw goby style baits at that point and catch a pile of fish. But it's only like a, a few week window where that's really, really a good pattern. And, you know, you get the same thing with like mayfly hatches. It may not be a long, it may be a couple of days, but if you understand what's going on, what time of year it is, you're going to understand that the fish do relate and have fish behavior changes based on what's going on with their forage. Uh, so that is definitely one thing to consider. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the moon phases. You know, I've talked a little bit about moon phases on this channel before. I can't, I can't tell you again specifically. It's kind of like the barometric pressure. I don't know exactly what's happening other than from my experiences. And I can tell you 100% that a lot of what the fish are doing, a lot of what bass movement is, comes down to moon cycle. A lot of their activity levels when it comes to forage come down to moon cycle. And what I mean by that is, you know, there definitely is a good correlation to spawning phases with respect to the moon cycle where you get fresh fish that are coming in based on a full moon or a new moon. They don't always have to spoon a spawn on a moon cycle, but we definitely do see a correlation there. Um, we see correlations with fish activity levels when you've got a full moon. You know, one one thing I always expect when I go out, if I've got a full moon the night before or, you know, I'm within the couple of days of the full moon, generally those fish feed up much, much better at night. And therefore the morning bite, which technically is usually one of your better bites, a lot of time is not that good because the fish have all fed during the night, which makes fishing during the day tougher during that period. Uh, you know, if you've got a new moon, New moon doesn't seem to be the same way, but if you're talking about a full moon, it definitely matters. And I can tell you that you definitely have good bite windows geared around those moon cycles and the moon phases. You know, I can in in the musky world, it's unbelievable to me how often if you were to take the the muskies that are caught or the muskies that are seen and pair them up with the different phases of the moon cycle during the course of the day, what you will find is that the activity you're seeing on the water almost always relates to the peak period based on the moons. So that is something that I've related over to the bass world, and I see the same thing. The difference is it's not quite as important with the bass fishing world as it is the musky fishing world because there are more bass to catch. You've got very few musky per, you know, you've got very few musky per acres of water, whereas in the bass world, you've got several bass per acre of water. So it's one of those things where uh, you can still find fish and you can catch bass regardless of what cycle of the moon you're in. But in the in the musky world, a lot of times the only peak period to fish is a couple hour window. It's that important. So very much so the fish use it 
It's something that we need to pay attention to. And if you can figure it out, it's something that really leads to you having an advantage over the fish or your competition if you're a tournament angler. But there are lots and lots of factors out there that affect fish behavior. It's something that the more we learn, the more experience you can get on the water, the better the angler you're going to be because you can utilize everything that's going on around you to help you figure out where and when those fish are going to be biting. So don't overlook it. It's one thing that I think it's the boring part of the subject, right? Everybody wants to hear all the cool new baits, you know, all these, the new trends in fishing. But the reality is those new baits aren't going to be as valuable to you if you don't understand the basics of this type of, of video, you know, the fish behavior and the things that are dictating the fish behavior. This is truly the stuff that will make you a better angler. So hopefully you, you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and stay tuned. We have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.